Hello everybody, in this lesson, we're gonna see how we can remove duplicates from a data set. Now, if you have not been following along, you can get this messy data set down in the GitHub below. I'll have a link, you can just download the CSV and you are good to go. All we're gonna need for this lesson is our dplyr. Let's go ahead and run this whole thing so we get the library and the data frame. And let's open up our data frame. Now, at first glance, even if you've been using this data set in previous lessons when we were looking at parsing and converting dates as well as handling missing data, you may not have noticed that we have duplicates in here. We do. We have duplicates right down here. We have Alice Johnson and Alice Johnson. It just wasn't something that maybe I pointed out, so maybe you just didn't notice. But we have another duplicate, which is we have a customer ID here that's 104, and we have another customer ID that's 104. And typically within a data set like this, this is gonna be our unique ID, this is our primary key. So we shouldn't have duplicates for a customer ID. And so there are a few things that we're gonna be doing within this in order to make sure that we remove the correct duplicates from our data set. So let's come over here, and the first thing that we are going to do is we wanna to check to see are there duplicate rows. So we're gonna take our data frame, and we'll just do it like this because it's a little easier to read. And we're going to do a distinct on it. So distinct, it's going to keep only unique or distinct rows from a data frame. And that's it. It's pretty simple. And I actually need to, I don't think I wrote that right. Uh, we're going to run it just like this. Keep it simple. And as we go up, you'll notice we still have the 104 and the 104 because it's looking for distinct across all columns. So the only one that is the same across all columns is Alice Johnson. You'll see 101, Alice Johnson, Alice J, same transaction amount, same transaction day, same category, same everything. But 104 David Lee is not the same as 104 Emma who made a different purchase. We got those confused. So the only true duplicate across all columns is going to be Alice Johnson. Now we can very easily remove the second Alice Johnson, because we can come right here. We're just going to say data frame underscore no. I spelled duplicates right. If you guys have ever watched me, you know how terrible I am at, uh, at spelling. We're going to take our data frame. We're going to look at the distinct, and that's going to get passed through into this new data frame. So let's run this. You'll see we have one less. And so now we have this saved. There's no more Alice Johnson. And so we are doing really good. But what about this 104 right here? Well, we can do it kind of the easy way, which is just saying, okay, we only want to keep one of these people. And so we can actually use this exact same syntax. And let's get it over here just so it looks nice. We'll do duplicates two here. And I'm going to say, take the distinct, but only of this one specific column, customer ID. So we're going to pass through I need to spell this right, customer ID. And when we run this, let's go ahead and run it. We're gonna go like that. And now we don't have any duplicates in our customer ID. You're gonna quickly notice though, we don't have the rest of our data and that's not ideal. Let's come right here and we're gonna use another argument, which is dot keep all. And we'll do dot keep all. And you can go back and check, it's just gonna keep all the other columns. And so we just want to say true. By default, it was false. So we'll run this again. And duplicates two, we now have all the columns. And we got rid of that second one. Now, was that correct? I don't know. And there may be a better methodology to actually keep, to actually determine which customer ID we want to keep. Because this one doesn't have a customer name. And if we go back to right here, this person made a purchase on 10, or the transaction day at least, on 10 4 of 2024. And this person up here only made one on March, which is 3 5, which is before it. So you might want to incorporate some logic here to say, we actually want to take the person with the most recent transaction date. And we can do that. And that's actually not super hard to do. So let's come here. Let's put this right down here. We'll do. We'll make this uh, no duplicates three. We're going to take our data frame and let's tab over here. We still want to look at the customer ID and take the distinct customer ID. We just want to arrange it because it's taking it going top down. It's saying, okay, keep that one. If there's ever a duplicate down here, get rid of it, which is what it did right here. It said, okay, keep this one. Oh, we have a duplicate, get rid of it. 
So what we want to do is we want to order this. And so we're going to do an enter here. And let me just bring it over here so it looks nice. We'll do arrange. And we want to arrange this by that transaction date. We want to do it by the customer ID first and then the transaction date. But we want to do this descending from highest to lowest. That's the most recent. So we want to say take the most recent person. Then we'll add our pipe here. And now when we run this, we get an error because this is all caps. All right, let's try this again. I got excited and let's go look at this uh, no duplicates three. And unfortunately, we're getting the same thing. And that's because of a transaction date issue. Uh, we're going to go back. And if you haven't done this already, or you haven't taken that lesson on parsing and converting dates, you, we need to do that. That is really important, actually. So we're going to um, clean this data up a little bit. I'm going to place it right here. So you'll have that in the code in the GitHub. But I'm going to take this. I'm going to run this. And if we go and look at our original data frame, now we have standardized these dates. So now when we run this and we take a look at the duplicates three, now it's taking David Lee. It was not working properly because our dates were not properly cleaned. And so before they looked horrible. And I think we should be able to see this right here. These dates are all over the place. And so it didn't know how to order them properly until we cleaned them. Now, I'm not going to go into the data cleaning process for the dates because that was our last lesson in this series. So you can go and check that out if you want to. Again, I'll have this code in the GitHub. So you can just copy and paste this if you'd like. But it is worth noting that you can go learn how to do it in that last lesson. But then once we clean that up and we standardize them all properly, we order them from highest to lowest, which is going to look like this. So these are the most recent all the way down to the old ones. And then we kept the distinct customer ID. And so now our output looks a lot better. We now only have one Alice Johnson. And now we kept David Lee because he had the more recent transaction date. Now for this use case, that logic works. But you need to figure out the logic for your actual data set. Because maybe that doesn't make sense. Maybe you want the original person and this new person needs to get a new customer ID. And you can do that by maybe taking the max customer ID and adding one to it. I don't know. Depends on what you're doing. But that is how we can remove the duplicates. And we can make sure at least follow some type of logic that we can actually document and hand off and people can understand. So I hope that you learned something. And if you want to dive into data cleaning and using R even more, I have a full course on my platform, Analyst Builder. I will have a link in the description. But I hope that this was helpful. If it was, be sure to like and subscribe below. And I will see you in the next video.